Hello, everyone. Andrew here again. Welcome back to episode four of this presentation on the product school about how to interview at top tech companies. Today, we'll be going over the behavioral IC interviews. IC meaning individual contributors, so non-managerial positions. So as usual, a little bit about myself. My name is Andrew O. I am a product manager, a former founder, and a coach. I've worked at companies such as Grab, TikTok, and Pulong. Pulong being a stock and crypto trading app based in Indonesia, Grab being a ride hailing company uh, based in Southeast Asia as well. I've also founded multiple different startups, ranging from e-commerce to social to flying taxis. And I'm also a coach on Exponents, uh, one of the world's leading product management interview platforms. We can learn and train how to interview and up your frameworks and skills, as well as being able to find mocking partners to help you improve your interviewing abilities. So <clears throat> without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, today, we'll be going over a few topics here. So what exactly is behavioral? What is the framework breakdown for how to address these types of questions? Um, and uh, three, just going over and reviewing the types of questions that we have um, that we'll be going over in this walkthrough. So what is behavioral? Now, there is a difference between IC and managerial behavioral questions. Um, next week will be the final episode of this five-part series where we'll be going over the managerial behavioral questions as it differs quite significantly from the IC ones. So today we'll just be focusing on IC. And so I will define what behavioral is in this context. So behavioral interviews are really about determining how you operate and execute as a product manager. Uh, and so what I would recommend before you enter any behavioral interview rounds with a specific company, one of the most important things, the best things that you can do for yourself is to get familiar with the company's mission and principles of that specific company. Because you may need to tailor your answers or your style of responses to that company that, uh, that may value very, very different specific uh, traits or themes um, of which they will be expecting out of the PMs. Now, you also want to prepare uh, be prepared to speak on a few past projects that you've worked on in the past um, and any other kind of like scenario that you might have been involved in uh, politically. Really, this is about how can you operate and influence stakeholders as an IC? So why is this being assessed? It's important for these companies to really be able to understand if you can succeed within their organization and the complexities that that organization will have. Um, so, you know, for example, if uh, a company is stressing more on you being able to really rein in on the engineering team, come in and be able to um, <clears throat> set and dictate a roadmap and a strategy with them, uh, then you might get more questions tailored and based on that. You might have other behavioral interviews that might be more reflective really looking for more culture fit. Um, <clears throat> great example, this is Shopify, and they ask very specific questions like, tell me your life story. Um, again, every company is different. Every company will be looking for very specific thematic themes um, of what they would expect and, and really require for their PMs to succeed within their own organization. So who will be interviewing you? This would be a range of different interviewers, but likely it will be interviewers from one level up. So you're going to be expecting a hiring manager, a skip level, or even an engineering lead to conduct these interviews with you. Uh, engineering lead would be more specific to technical interviews, but um, for I'd say half of the majority of the companies, uh, technical interviews um, would actually be more like behavioral interviews on how you would interact and work with engineering team. So 
Um, what? Let, let's go over a few of the <clears throat> strategic points uh, on how to prepare for this. Uh, first, let's go over the stories. You want to prepare three, three stories with high impact projects. So what I would recommend are really just three core principle projects. One story about failure. So this could be a failure on a specific project. It could be something personal that you have gone through, but really it's <clears throat> but really it's a story about failure um, working with a particular situation or project that you've been through. The second story is about working on a complex problem with a scope and or stakeholder roadblocks that you had to navigate through. Um, this is going to be assessing more of the stakeholder cross-functional management um, side of the story that you can reflect and shine on if asked. And lastly, the third story should be about your biggest win. And when I mean your biggest win, I mean the win of which you yourself had clearly defined that product or future strategy um, and really just own that project all the way to the finish line. The next thing you want to do is just <clears throat> uh, really consider some of these storytelling frameworks. So you're going to want to answer each of these behavioral questions within two to five minutes. And at that point, if you need to go further, just make sure you check in with the interviewer and ask if there's any other um, questions or uh, any specific areas that they want to dive deeper on. So your goal is to answer, again, within two to five minutes. Uh, I would recommend using a star framework to respond to each answer. Uh, this is pretty standard. You might also see this in your interview guide, depending on the companies that you're interviewing for. Um, star framework, S-T-A-R stands for situation, task, action, and, re and results. So situation is about setting that context to help frame up and provide context towards that specific uh, situation or problem that you had encountered. Uh, task is about what was the, the goal that you were trying to achieve. Um, action is about what were uh, sort of the, uh, the solutions that you were able to derive to get out of the situation or to move things forward and results would be um, simply what were the results or the end outcome of uh, this specific story. So usually you would wanna tie that back to a metric-based income uh, outcome if you can. Uh, the next thing to do, uh, another strategy you wanna, you want to just play along with is to also ask for time to consolidate your thoughts before each story. Now, Behavioral interviews are supposed to have a natural flow, but uh, that said, uh, when I say natural flow, that's really up to you and the tone that you set um, with the interviewer. It's only weird if you make it weird. It's only awkward if you make it awkward. So just casually ask for some time to consolidate your thoughts. That's it. Um, and then just don't spend too long on it. Just spend 10 to 20 seconds. This isn't like a execution or product sense interview. Um, so you just want like, a few seconds to really just consolidate your approach and really just narrate and pick the story of uh, the one that's best matched to the specific question they're going to get asked. Um, state, and then when you start answering um, the question, you want to make sure that you're stating up front your approach. Talk about, you know, what is the structure of um, the story that you're going to be narrating back to the interviewer. Um, this is important so the interviewer understands where you're going with this. And also it just helps the interviewer understand your way of thinking. Um, this is really, really important communication style and skills that it's going to be reflected and assessed. So just make sure that the interviewer can see where the finish line is going to be. Um, and again, just the overall structure of your approach for answering these questions. Next, you want to also just do some check-ins with the interviewer. Again, if you feel like your answer is dragging a little bit too long, or if you feel like there were some crucial points within the story of which he might have some follow-up questions, or uh, you might just in the video see that the interviewer might want to ask a question, just check in at that point and just ask if they have any questions. Um, again, that's not just for the sake of um, letting that interviewer have an opportunity to speak. It just reflects really good collaboration and teamwork skills and communication skills at hand. Lastly, be selfish. Uh, ensure that you do say I instead of we. 
um, for certain parts of your story where it really was you driving the whole thing through. Uh, if you do say we at those specific uh, points, uh, where it really was you driving the whole thing forward, um, you're discrediting yourself and you're giving um, shared credit to the entire team of which it could have been someone else that's arrived a specific solution or um, you know had the tenacity to really just take this um, uh, this approach to the problem that you were, you were trying to solve for in your story. So uh, for ICs, I think there are three main types of questions you're going to get asked. Project-based, cross-functional-based, and culture-based. So um, an example of a project-based question could be, tell me about a project that you worked on recently. Um, an example of a cross-functional base question could be, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a stakeholder. And cultural based uh, would be maybe, tell me about a time that you failed or was wrong about something. Each of these questions are assessing a specific, um, are, are assessing a specific aspect of the way that you work. And it also is supposed to be assessing uh, a particular way of thinking slash culture fit that you also employ. Again, uh, these are the three main themes that you're likely going to encounter as an IC in terms of your behavioral-based questions. And it's really important that you understand what the goal uh, of these questions that you're getting asked really are. So when you take that 10 to 20 seconds uh, to really consolidate your thoughts and you ask the interviewer for time, first, Try to understand the goal of the question. What is the point of this question and what is it really trying to ask me? Reading between the lines. So for example, um, tell me about a time that you failed. It's likely going to be, it's, what it's really asking you is tell me how you're, um, how you're humble and showing humility uh, in a particular situation uh, where you failed. It's trying to drive at your honesty and your sense of character. Um, Telling about a asking about a project based question, like tell me about the project that you worked on recently. Um, that's likely going to be more assessing, uh, kind of like your approach and your framework to how you tackle problems, how you execute and operationally um, operate as a PM. So just really try to, again, take that step back. First, really try to understand what the goal of the question is really trying to ask you so you can formulate your star response um, based around that narrative. So let's go into a specific example um, of each of these questions, which I just mentioned before. So the first one is that project-based question of tell me how, tell me about a project that you worked on recently. So when it's asking that specific question, it doesn't have to be your current or your most recent role. Could go back a couple of companies, could go back um, you know, several years. Honestly, even if it's eight or 10 years, if the example is really great and it's relevant, I will still bring that up as well. Um, you can consider a story from, from, from those areas, from those eras of your career. Now, uh, really the framework that you want to be approaching for a situation like this, a question like this, again, you will try to uh, structure your response in a star-based framework. But uh, what you want to do is, again, redefine the goal. So in this case, um, the ingredients you're going to be having here, when I'm talking about defining the goal, I mean the goal of the project more specifically. Um, you want to state and focus in on the challenges and the potential complexity of the problem that you are trying to solve. Explain the strategy formation of how you went about creating that product strategy or future strategy to tackle that problem. And then you can go into the launch and the results. Um, of that specific project that you had. So uh, I won't go into a full fledged answer here, but I will maybe just go into some high level response that you can provide. So uh, maybe let's do an example, a hypothetical example. Uh, let's talk about maybe me being a PM at Uber on the fraud team. So at Uber, um, really the goal here on the fraud team, our main OKR was to reduce the fraud loss. Um, one of the issues that we had with this specific 
uh, with a specific problem. Could have been that, you know, all we have is data. Uh, we don't actually really know who is actually frauding us. Uh, ourselves and probably every other company had never actually even gone about trying to even make the effort to go talk to their end users uh, and show user centricity to really determine all the blind spots and uh, all the fraud methodologies that could be affecting Uber as a company when it comes to fraud. And the end users in this case are not just the victims, but actually the fraudsters themselves. Um, and so this is kind of like where you're staying that challenge of the complexity of the problem and it's going to get deeper from here. So then you can go ahead and talk about how, you know, without talking to use uh, to our fraudster users, um, we don't know, again, like not only who they are and how they're being incentivized and why they're choosing Uber to fraud, but also we don't know their entire end-to-end -end user journey. Um, you know, how are they navigating through the UX and what other systems are they using to try to fraud us? Um, so without that kind of visibility, uh, we're kind of acting blind. And again, all we do is look at data to try to make some fraud rules and um, that in itself is making a pretty inefficient ML model to even operate on. So, you know, then you go into the structure formation. So what do we do here in this case? <clears throat> what was the, um, the action that you took to solve for this problem? Uh, so then you can go into how you maybe set up a program to bribe fraudsters, to tell you about new fraud methodology, um, uh, new fraud methodology uh, that you might not have known before. Uh, and this allowed you to get bait uh, or fish to catching on to that bait that you fished out. And um, from there, you're able to actually meet the fraudsters and you decided to include your designer, your engineer. So um, everyone can operate within the same level of information. And what you learned was X, Y, and Z. Uh, this X, Y, and Z was really key to, uh, were really key strategic insights that helped you then formulate the product strategy, which was, you know, again, X, Y, Z, uh, which then helped us transit that into our roadmap, which resulted in us reducing the fraud loss by say 90% over the last over the next six months after we launched. So that could be again just a really good framework uh, with a uh, semi-example of how you can go ahead and tackle this specific question. I try to nail that within five minutes. Uh, I wasn't timing myself there, but you're leaving enough of a skeleton for the interviewer to be able to ask follow-up questions. And the interviewer will then ask you follow-up questions and go a little bit deeper. Um, so for example, they might ask, you know, what were specific KPIs or metrics and North Star metrics that you decided to track for this product? Um, how did you, uh, like what, like how did you test your hypothesis for the specific MVP? Um, you know, were there any challenges uh, or roadblocks that you encountered uh, trying to move this project along with your stakeholders, who were those stakeholders. So these are just the other examples of follow-up questions that you're going to get asked based on a question like this. And this is probably the most common project-based question you're going to get asked. So tell me about a project that you worked on. And those are just some very, very common example questions uh, in terms of follow-up questions that you're gonna get asked based on your response here. Now, one of the things you do not wanna do is drag out your answer. Interviewers hate this. Interviewers don't like um, when you're dragging your answer to say five, 10 minutes and you're not giving them an opportunity to even check in on that. So again, communication here is key. Your ultimate goal is to make your interviewer want to work with you realistically in a work environment. And if they can't sit through a 45 minute call with you, let alone bear a five to 10 minute answer that you're responding with, you're going to get marks deducted off the rubric. So just be careful of that. Um, again, keep everything concise, stick to high level summary and leave enough breath and just a shallow enough depth in your initial walkthrough of this example to reflect good strategy, good structure, um, and a clear narrative so that the interview has enough ingredients to ask you deeper questions to assess your thought process here. Next question. Let's move on to the cross-functional stakeholder question. Um, 
from various stakeholders. So next question that we have here is about, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with a stakeholder. Now, um, what you wanna do here is take a slightly different approach. Again, um, <coughs> targeting the structure, you can still use the star response method to um, structure your response. But the strategy here, uh, or the different components that you wanna go with in your framework would be, again, um, really identify from the context of the project or whatever the situation is, what the goal was. You wanna focus a lot more time in this, um, in this response on the struggle or the challenge that you had with the stakeholder. Um, so, you know, if let's just say that you have, um, let's just say that this is a five minute response, spend maybe two minutes uh, going over the specific challenges that you had with that stakeholder. Um, so that stakeholder could be an engineering lead, a business stakeholder, um, could be your manager even. Whoever it is, um, you would just want to really be able to state that challenge and demonstrate empathy for that person. Empathy here is really the big key and the secret sauce that most integrators are looking for in any kind of cross functional stakeholder response. Um, so demonstrate your empathy for that stakeholder that's blocking you. Um, be objective, show in this story that you uh, are not only being um, fair and also demonstrating empathy towards a specific stakeholder, but that you're being objective by showing data, talking to users, um, getting some sort of evidence or high level of conviction for how you try to move this stakeholder forward. Um, and if it doesn't, and how maybe if it didn't come to a pass or like an approval from that stakeholder, how could you had um, maybe come in between and compromise uh, in order to make this work? Really, this is such a crucial um, example of a question because it's really just trying to demonstrate how can you succeed in the complexities of a company uh, and also culturally to win over people that you're going to be working with. Um, this kind of question is going to be assessing whether you're an empathetic uh, leader that can operate within the team and get along with others, or are you a tyrant um, that tries to force things forward? Uh, this is this is real where a lot of people. Uh, might get cut. So you need to be careful about the way that you're cracking this narrative. And again, it's one thing to just say it, but it's another thing to show it. The way that you come across in this interview, the way that you come across in the story should be genuine or at least seem genuine. Otherwise, um, you know, a, great, a really great interviewer will see through it uh, and know that this may be a really ingenuine answer. And this kind of story is not reflecting who you're portraying right now. So. Be careful about that. Um, and last part of that, of course, is like tell them that approach of how you won that person over and show the results. Now, if um, if you are going on a story, uh, whether it's true or not, with regards to how you know, even showing data, even compromising this stakeholder is still not moving, um, the next best thing you can do is escalate. And maybe it would be wise to include a story, or again, you can navigate the story um, of a what if situation of you know what happens as a follow up question if um, the stakeholder still decided not to budge. <laughs> uh, if you've come kind of demonstrating the story already, everything that you tried that you could do, um, you've shown empathy, you try to compromise, you show data. Uh, it's almost like a really dumb no that the stakeholder shouldn't. Um, that the stakeholder is not playing ball with you at that point. But the most important piece that you can demonstrate to this interviewer is that you do have a line for when you're going to escalate this problem because it's out of your hands at that point. Escalate it to your manager um, and demonstrate demonstrate how you basically have a case um, at hand because of all the things that you've done before. 
uh, to try to move the stakeholder and let that stake, uh, let your manager or your skip level be the one to handle the decision with that person's uh, manager or skip level. Let, and at that point, if at that point it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out, but at least you've really done everything you could to make that work. Lastly, next question is, tell me about a time you failed or was wrong about something. This is one of my favorite questions. So really what this question is trying to get at is it's about humility and empathy. And the, the, the part about this kind of question um, is that, you know, a lot of PMs, and you know, this is no secret, I think, I think honestly, over 50% of the PMs, I would even, I wouldn't even be even be hard pressed to say it could be as high as 80 plus percent. Um, do not have humility, they have a lot of pride, they have a lot of ego. Um, they also power trip quite a bit, hence that cross functional partnership question that we just reviewed is also really important. Um, Stories of failure is where you can try to root a lot of that out in your assessment as an interviewer of that particular candidate. Um, and so it's really important for you to choose a story where you're being honest and not just honest, but genuinely it was a painful experience that you might've gone through. So um, try to pick out that painful story. It, it could be projects and work related, but let's be real. Um, some of the some of the best examples that you can really pull out from this is you know it could be something on a more personal basis and that's totally fine um you can just clarify with the interviewer if it does if it has to be work related but they'll most likely tell you it can also be personally related as well again it's not about the work context per se it's more so about um assessing your sense of character the more painful the story is, the better it can be because this story is trying to assess how did you uh, how did you pull yourself out from this hole that you were in and how did it make you a better person that you are today? Uh, therefore, if you could try to go with a really shallow example and you try to go with how you ended up being so much greater because of it, um, it's either going to seem like a lie, uh, it being untrue, or, um, you know, if you went with a shallow example and you had a shallow response of how you were slightly better, it just isn't a good example to begin with. The trick here, again, and I can't stress this enough, you have to go with the most painful or the next next to the most painful example of a story and use that as the catalyst for this response. Um, similar to the cross-functional partnership um, question that we went through, you want to spend a good 40 to 60% of this response talking about the challenges that you went through, why you were wrong or why you failed in this particular story. And then the recovery, the redemption. What did you learn from that story um, or that challenge that you have gone through? And how has it made you a better PM? How has it made you a better person? Um, evolution, improvement, both of these things are some of the most important characteristics of which it's trying to assess in terms of the outcome, but really a sense of character is where this question is really getting at. Okay, so that is all for today for our IC um, in interview questions that you can expect to get at top tier tech companies. Next week, we will be going over the managerial behavioral questions, which is a lot more complex. Um, it will go into topics such as hiring, um, culture building, uh, and many other categories. So please stay tuned. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care.